So this is a crash course to using our web-based free simulator. This video will help you load a character, run a simulation, understand the reports, and understand the rotations. Uh, we've had about 100,000 people testing this with us throughout Legion Beta, and we've been working closely with the theorycrafters as well. So it's pretty bug-free now that Legion is here. Now that doesn't mean a few hidden bugs aren't out there, so if you find one, tell us, and we'll have it fixed in 24 hours. So let's get started. Click Run a Simulation. Now you will need to load a character, and you can choose from a default template for your spec, load a character from the armory, or load one from our in-game add-on. To use the add-on, download it from the site. Uh, there's a link here in the top navigation menu. You can also get it off of Curse. Install it into the Warcraft directory under the Interface Add-ons folder. Then open the add-on and copy the text string that you see in the export window. Now return to the site click the Add on Import button and paste the text here. Now that your character is set up, let's look at the simulator options on the right. So you'll need to choose a version, and this is meant to track patches and PTR versions of the game. If you choose Live, it will always be the latest version of the live game. We'll automatically keep that updated. Uh, for now, I'm choosing Legion Dev because that's what we're de developing on during this demo, but you almost always will be choosing uh, the Live option. Then choose the setup that you want. So right now there's just a few basics. Uh, once Legion bosses are released for testing, we'll be adding each one of those to the list. And then choose your rotation. Uh, we have at least one basic rotation set up for each spec right now. And note that any rotations you make, personally, will be listed here. And if you want to use a rotation made by somebody else, I'll show you how to do that in another video. So these are also some advanced options. You can choose the margin of error if you want. For now I just keep it high at 1% since I'm doing really fast tests. And for the output level, if you choose Report, the simulator does as many iterations as it needs to in order to hit your error target. However, to dig into different parts of the rotation, uh, choosing the log output is probably going to be a better choice, and that will grab one of the logs from uh, the many iterations that were run. And that's pretty helpful for digging through, which I'll show you later. So one last thing I like to do before simulating is save the setup. So this lets me reuse that setup for future tests. For example, um, if you want to test different talent setups or various sets of gear, uh, this is a good option because you can reuse this again then later. And when you reuse the setup, you can also load different characters into it. So if you want to run somebody else's character or a friend from the guild through it, uh, the setup will be the same. Okay, so now we're ready to simulate, so I'm going to press this big green button. So the first thing you look at here is that this setup did about 114,000 damage. And then there's some extra details about those results. So this error line is telling me, as a non-stats person, that the simulator is 95% confident that the average DPS falls within about 1,100 damage of this number at the top. And the standard deviation is telling me how wild the spec is, meaning that um, you could be doing very consistent damage or inconsistent damage. Now you can see here for Outlaw Rogues, um, it actually has the highest swings by far because of Roll the Bones. So one boss fight I might do 18,000 more damage or less damage than what's listed here. Now this is important because if you look at rankings on a combat log site or hit a target dummy in the game, this tells you how far off you can expect to be from attempt to attempt. So one time you might actually do 100,000 DPS and another time you might do 130,000 DPS. So the rest of the report has what you would expect, uh, a breakdown of spells uh, that were used and more detailed information for each one, buffs, their uptimes, and their related details. Uh, charts are coming soon. And now it's also worth noting that this character data section is here. So let's say someone shared the simulation with you, or it's shared in a theory crafter's guide. This section lets you see everything that they assumed in the setup, from, from the character to the artifacts, talents, gear, and stats. So let's see what a log report looks like real quick. Now you can see on this report here that every event and the timestamp shows up here. And if you want to filter to a specific ability, you can do that pretty easily. Uh, I'm going to type roll the bones into the search box and all of those events show up. And let's limit it to only cast success events real quick. And then if I want to see other abilities, I just enter them uh, with commas and you can see how it filters to everything that I'm typing in. Pretty easy. So Mr. Robot saves every simulation report that you ever do, and you can find those by clicking the Browse button uh, here at the top. Now you'll see a favorites list on the left and a list of every simulation on the right, 
and I can filter both of these lists by any parameter, like my rogue test character, or the spell rotation used, like Zoop's test. So you can see how long this list can get, so I like to make good use of the favorites option. And I can add this report to the favorites uh, here on the report page. Uh, I like to give it a smart name so that I can easily identify it, and then I just click Add to Favorites button. Alright, let's take a quick look at rotations because that's pretty important to the simulation process. Uh, you see here at the top of this report the rotation is listed. Now if I hover over it, you see that it's clickable, so I click on it to see the actual rotation. Now you can also find this on the simulation setup page as well. It's the view edit button to the right of the rotation. Both links take you to the same page. Let's take a quick look at what's going on here. So this is a priority list. Things at the top are more important than things at the bottom. And when you're playing the game, you use an ability and wait for the global cooldown or the cast time to finish, and then you pick another ability. So in the simulator, every time you use an ability, it starts over at the top and it finds the next thing you should do. So the first thing listed here is Blade Flurry. Uh, it's a toggle, basically, that does damage to enemies around you, but it also drains your energy. So if you don't have three or more um, mobs near you, generally you don't want to have this turned on because you're losing energy. So the first two things toggle that on and off. Now Ambush and Vanish are basically an opener, uh, having to do with stealth, and then you can use them a handful of more times during the fight. Now, Marked for Death gives you five combo points at once, so you want to use it as often as you can, but you don't want to waste it, and so we have a condition here that makes sure you don't waste it. Then we have some buffs and cooldowns, and we want to spend energy to, energy to get combo points, and if we have enough combo points, then we use the finisher. If not, we generate more combo points, as we've shown here towards the bottom of the list. Now, you see this finisher line here. Let's, let's step back and, and take a look at that. You might be wondering what that does. It just says finisher, and there's no magical finisher button. <laughs> so what we've done is instead of including all of the finisher abilities and logic right here, uh, which would kind of make this priority list look pretty messy and a little bit harder to follow, um, instead, the author of this rotation organized it in a separate action list, which makes it a much easier to understand. So let's take a look at that. So you can see here that the finisher section um, is looking to keep slice and dice, so roll the bones up when possible, otherwise use these other finisher abilities. Now you can do it either way, you can include them right in the priority list or you can include them in the separate one here. Uh, I personally like the cleanness of keeping them separate. And there you have it. For a more in-depth look at the parameters and how to edit a rotation, uh, I've got another video for you.